the trailer made it look really good and the trailer was deceiving. Oh boy. Hmm. Lockdown. Lockdown is a romantic comedy heist movie set during COVID. Yep. Said all those things at the same time. Uh, starring Anne Hathaway and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name so I'm going to pop it up in the top. Sorry dude, you were in 12 Years a Slave, got robbed of an Oscar, you're amazing, but I cannot pronounce your name so I'm just not going to try. Uh, this movie uh, involves these two people. Uh, they're both partners of 10 years. He says he's, she's refers to her as his wife but then they use the term partner so who knows. But they've been together for 10 years. Uh, they're living in England and they have just broken up but they're in lockdown together for two weeks and uh, they've broken up and so this is partly about them having to deal with the fact that they've broken up but are forced to kind of live in the same house and uh, also uh, at some point it becomes a heist movie because we can't just uh, huddle around this apartment cute apartment set for for too long without driving the audience crazy so let's uh let's make this exciting and have uh have them pull off a heist because uh let's stick it to the man sure so Anne Hathaway's character Linda listen Linda Linda is working for Harrods uh, she's like part of this like a CEO basically in that country there's a whole corporate thing going on she hates uh, the kind of the what what they're doing with the company and things like that and using COVID as an excuse and she decides to kind of stick it to them by stealing from the company and her partner works for a company that that does a lot of like shipping and stuff like that and they've been hired just so happens happenstance they've been hired to handle the um, taking of a bunch of like the jewelry and things like that from Harrods and some other um, you know, Selfridges and uppity uh, British um, department stores and switching them over because they're like changing hands and stuff so there's like a insurance liability so they have to change locations for all these items in order for them to be secure and under like insurance regulations so they'll be covered and they decide hey this is a perfect opportunity for you to for us to kind of work together despite what's going on with us and you know get a little bit of leg up for him he's not doing so well financially and with his job prospects and things like that and for her to kind of stick it to the company that she really really resents working for um and an opportunity for her as she sees it to be financially secure so she can quit and do what she wants this movie was like three movies in one one it's it's a COVID movie like we need another one of those we don't really know if this was a cash grab situation just to make it include a COVID or that the regulations where they were filming were so severe that they basically had to wear masks and do a lot more of that in order to be able to film in certain situations. So it's like, well, we might as well just put it into the plot and make it a whole thing. I'm just getting a little bit tired of it. And I tend to not love when they make movies after significant events without enough perspective. And we're still kind of in the middle of everything that I don't feel like you can really make a good COVID movie. You know, like Songbird. I'm Michael Perry. The other part of it is kind of a rom-com relationship movie. That was the part that I thought that I would hate the most, but this was actually the strongest part of the film. They had terrific chemistry, the acting was on point, and the dialogue was really, really snappy. You really understood their characters, you knew their relationship, they were really well drawn out. And then the third part was like, the tail end of the movie was like they just slapped it on there to make it something other than like a COVID rom-com, was uh, the heist part. And it was just, it felt like an afterthought, it felt like it was kind of taped on there, and it really just defied logic, like I was excited about it, but nothing really happened. It wasn't really a heist movie. It was just kind of like, it's there. Let's get it. Ending just kind of completely defied logic. Like we're supposed to believe like everything was just tied up in this nice little pretty bow and it left so many things that were not, that made no sense and that were kind of open-ended for me. It's supposed to go, that's the end. Happy.
comprehending. And you're just like, but I mean, I could see all the ways where this would have gone wrong. And aren't you going to explain? And no, nope, we're just going to, we're just going to, you know, suspension, disbelief. They got a, yeah, happy ending. Yay. What? Like, no, there's just so many plot holes right at the end that involved this whole thing, which didn't seem like it was going to work from the beginning at all. And the problem also is the pacing of this. Two thirds of the movie was just them yelling at each other in, in the apartment and all of their relationship things with like, let's see any little thing at the end of the heist. It just ended up not being the movie that you marketed to me. All in all, it was fine. It was a semi okay way to spend a little bit of time, a decent date movie, I guess. I mean, the performances, the actors are really what, what helped this along with the really good dialogue. But other than that, I mean, it was part, part of it was a little bit boring and a little bit depressing. And then the other part was like half attempt at a heist movie. Some pacing issues, I think, with the editing. And I think that that could have been fixed in the editing process. That's why the rating of this movie is... Nah. It was okay. I don't know if I'm ever going to watch it again. I don't even know if I really like would be like, go and watch this. I just know. Maybe wait a little while. Maybe wait a year or two for some perspective and to get out of the COVID thing to be able to kind of watch it without getting like, when you're watching it, like COVID stuff. Thank you.